Ah, we don't know why we're playing those titles in. It's not the Here's Hour, it's Dave's Tackle Box. It should be, it should be Dave's Tackle Boxy type stuff with Dave's Tackle Boxy type titles. But, although there are two Daves on the show, one in the window. Hello, Dave. Hello. You all right? Hi. Are you properly moved now? Getting there, yeah. Yeah. You see Still got a lot of unpacking to do and some curtains to get rid of. Really? <laughs> What do you want shot of them for? I think they lush them. Yeah. I do. I think you, I think you should keep those curtains for posterior. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can wipe things on them, can't you? Gary, yes. Gary. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I should not Mr. 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 Uh, Kitson isn't here, as you've probably gathered, because I don't look anything like him. Seriously, I don't. I look now like him, but... We have got a gaggle of reprobates. Um, you've met one, Dave Malik, in the in the big window up there. You'll see there's another one in the doghouse, mm -hmm. and you 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 should have heard what she did. I didn't do anything. During the <laughs> ident, you lying hound. <laughs> She's joined the boys. She can burp like a good one. Never did a thing. Really. Yeah. Got some news for you, it was recorded. <laughs> <laughs> we have another window that you can't see. This one's called the Skype window, and in it you will see Mr. Drip Tip himself. <laughs> it's Mr. Gary Dibley. Good evening, Gary. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you, Dave. How are you? I'm, I'm walking about and breathing, which for a man of my age is probably not a bad thing. How are you, uh, how are you diddling with your tips? Are they dribbling on nicely? I'm doing well, yeah. I've been polishing me ends, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, I've, I think I've made one to about seven today. And uh, I must say, you know, we had in the chat the other day, um, I think it was Mark who was going to send some stainless steel wick. Mm, yes, Mark I Dog. Did, I, I got some. And have you? Yeah, just just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. <laughs> He's, he sent that so I can send it out with the tips. Oh, isn't that so, nice? Uh, really nice. Yeah, so thank you very much for that, Mark. So, uh, yes, the, <laughs> I still haven't tried it yet. I've, I've been too busy today. I've been, I've been busy because obviously we swap shows for tomorrow. I, today, I spent most of the day barbecuing half a chicken, watching tennis and laying in the pool. Why was half a chicken watching tennis? It was in the barbecue at the time. I see. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> so, have you have you got the tips? Have you have you got the? T you see, nobody can see what he's down here. Hang on. <laughs> I wonder if I can turn. No, I'll not. It'll all go wrong if I do that. Have you got the tips you did today, then, Gary? Anywhere close? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Hold I, on. I'm only doing this because he's got no trousers on. Yeah, that's why I put them close. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you were going to have to get up and go out the back door. There's no chance, Dad. Because oh. <laughs> Daz is on holiday, isn't he, Sav? He is, yes. Is he? Gonna... Oh, yeah, so might... he, he won't be watching this. I might stand up then. All oh, right. Well, he has <laughs> He has said on many, many occasions he'd like to knock your back doors in. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I did hear a banging at the shed the other day and thought it might be him. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> right. He's... Okay. Yeah, come on then, Gary. Sort your tips out. There yeah. we go. These are sort of halfway through. Oh, they haven't had the little insert shoved up the jacksie yet? No. Little green one, or Malik Chite, whatever that is. Malachite. Malachite. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that? I'm sorry, I'm going to take you off screen for a minute, because I had noticed that there are a lot of people are calling it Malachite. <laughs> well, this one is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yeah, it's Malachite. It's like Malachi. Malachite. Not Malachite. No. Can't, okay. Can't say Malachite. Sorry, interrupted you. Go on then, Gary. That one there, that's tortoiseshell. Oh, that's pretty. Translucent as well, isn't it? Yeah. Is that off the 20, 20 mil blanks, the square ones? No, that was a 25 round. Ah. Uh, a little, yeah, coloured -y one. That looks like something that's for beginners. <laughs> <laughs> one of the, a white one. I'm going to call that one the Gary Glitter, because it's, it's got a bit of glitter in it. Now, the, you know you're going to have trouble selling that one. Who the hell wants to say there's something on Gary Glitter? 
But it does again, aren't we? Okay. <laughs> one of those runs and then uh-huh. tiny one. One of those runs and then really, I, I tried to go really small with the mouthpiece on that one. Oh, golden. That's about five mil at the end. Good Lord. So yeah, playing. Tidgy, would Tidgy, I've been having a bit blast at it, you know. I've seen. Shall I, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll go to close. you up, we can't, because we might as well. And here are some I made earlier. Um, from left to right, right, no, hang on a minute, whichever way. There's a purple one, this this here purple one. There it is. Somebody's got their name on that, haven't they, so I've, They have indeed. Yes. And oh, there's, nice. there's a little blue one that's got one hell of a size. Hang on, I'll zoom <laughs> in a bit. Um, I keep remembering that Mr. Dibley does a lot of Laura zooming in and out, so there you are. That's uh, six and a half mil up the centre, that is. Bloody hell. Long in hell. Apparently you can drip. That's uh, <laughs> that's blue malachite. And then we've got... Where is it? I'm not very good at this. That's the... Um, the um, Oh, God. There you go. Black and red. He said, dropping everything over. With a, a hint of uh, a hint of glitter in, um, and then because I'm colour blind, I wanted to make one I could see easily. <coughs> <laughs> so there's that one. I'm all look at this. I'm spilling stuff all over the place here. Look at that. There you go. That's uh, nothing gaudy. It's just plain red and yellow. Um, and then there's. The Darth Mall, which is in uh, red and black, and then I too have had a blast at the beast to- to- to shell. What do you think of that one, Gary? I know it'll take a second for you to be able to see it. That's nice, like that. I love that one. And then yeah. I have a piece of resistance because you know you said to go and watch videos. Yeah. I did, and that was what came out. Which you'll now be able to see, Mr. Malik. Nice. Can't see at the moment. Not there yet, is it not? Oh, there it is. Wow. That's the beastie. Captive ring, and that was turned actually on it. It's not slipped over either end, it won't come off. A captive oh, ring fine. on a drip tip in orange plastic. So, how did you manage to polish the. Um no, I'll stop there, Dave. Go on, I know what you're going to say. I'm I was going to say, how did you manage to polish the ring piece? <laughs> no, but I, I won't. <laughs> no, I won't. won't the, you've got to see the look on your face when you ask the question. How did you polish your ring piece? Um, yeah. <laughs> what it, thing, the thing about it is, is actually a flat left on it, because I hadn't quite got the blank turned right down. Um, and you just, you turn the ring, you turn a bead, and then undercut the bead and if you're very very gentle um, you can get it to come away quite nicely and and then kind of by using a, a rate what do you call it a scraper a round yep. end, round end scraper um, I'd kind of semi polished it with that and then when you use the the what do you call the stuff the micro mesh yeah uh, because you you turn it on the lathe I just up the speed to twice what you did at that and, and thought, well, it'll get one flung round, which it did, and the, and the mesh went on. But I'll, I'll video that for you, because I'm, I'm good that way. Do they look all right to you, then? Damn good. Yeah, really good. Really, really good. It's, uh, the, the polishing can be a pain in the bum. I mean, I've, I've done them, because I'm doing them on the metal lathe, I can't get the, sometimes the, you know, the, the group, you know, I always end up with a groove of some sort. Yes because um, you're turning the wheels like buggery and uh, but I've had to sort of polish the the grooves out and um, they're, they're sort of they're getting there they're getting there slowly I'm, I'm still learning it as well really it's only been sort of two three weeks so two three weeks time Dave you'll, you'll be a, a master <laughs> I, I doubt that but I have heard I have heard that Mr Malik is toying with the idea of taking this up your wife's not watching is she Dave? No, because she's probably reading chat, so. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to get into it. But buying all the equipment, I can't really do that at the moment. 
No, no, I know the feeling only too well, um, and I'm, I'm here to tell everybody that it's it was my birthday present. This little Proxon DB250 mini lathe. It's only a little. It's only about that big. Um, but then you've got mandrels and there's there's the tools and stuff like that. And as I'm sure Gary will confirm the tools, especially for metal lathe, and they're far from cheap, are they, Gary? No, they're not. I think when when obviously I got mine the do you know what the first time today Dave I actually put on the um, when I bought mine I bought a a quick change um, tool post first time I used it today and uh, I kicked myself because I'm thinking why the bloody hell didn't I work out how to put that on from day one uh, <laughs> it makes it so much easier it's incredible but no they are I think they're, they're a set of six or seven bits for the metal labor is about 100 quid good god almighty yeah not cheap no not at all sav are you going to be uh, turning tips no i'd lose fingers oh yeah actually i should have thought on i had intended to, to put a video camera on when i was just getting a start to show everybody what a klutz you can be but uh damn why has linkedin just opened <laughs> That's a very good question. It's, I've got no clue. However, never mind. I will stick the thumb under the camera. And look at that. There was blood. The lathe bit me. The lathe bit Shocking. me. It's not good, is it? No. And every, everybody watches Tin Your Tip religiously, week after week, waiting for blood and getting on. And then the one time... There's blood comes on a mod type thing, and yours truly is the one getting blooded on, and he didn't film it. That looked like a was that a square, Dave, that hit you? Yeah, it was the edge of a square. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you, when you when you look at it, when you you sit and digging on with it, you look at it and you see the round, don't you? Yeah. Because the square bits aren't in your line of vision that often, so you see where the round's going to be, and you go ah, oh, and just ha ha. Yes, we've, yeah. we've, we need to film all of this and show people how to do it. I I've got to tell you, I, I, I had no clue how relaxing it could be to sit with the worry, worry thing, with your, your tip in the worry, worry thing, just gently nibbling at it. And then <laughs> it's, it's got. Sorry. So that's a funny look on your face. Why is that like that? <laughs> I was just imagining everything that went through Gary Dibley's mind <laughs> as you've said that. I think you've just got to take one look and you can tell. Yeah. Oh dear. There he yeah. is. So I um Right, tips. Um if if it is all the same, when are you doing the second set of them, Gary? Uh what, for the For the senior tips. Senior tips. Um, last one went tonight. I'm waiting for Graham sent me some stuff from Thailand that, mm -hmm. that is is in. Well, it, it arrived in the UK about five days ago, and uh, as soon as I get the inserts through, I've got sort of six, seven ready to go. So it's literally just waiting for post now. No, I was thinking of the second lot because you're going to do one a, one a day for a month. When's the second yeah. the second set of them going to be? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I started it early this year, and, and we're sort of thinking that obviously the the main event, the children need thing, is is in November sometime. So going to sort of try and tie the two in together. So get this batch out of the way, um, then obviously vape fest and all of that sort of stuff. So probably around September, for the second step. Okey dokey. Um, well, in that case, if if what I turn out meets your standards, I will. Uh, match you tip for tip excellent that'd be good so two tips a day yes <laughs> there's there's so many places we could go with that you know <laughs> and we probably shouldn't sav I, I i'm gonna treat this a little bit like uh, vt talk let's call it a rehearsal for tomorrow <laughs> what's chat saying Oh, what if I can pick through the stuff that I can read? There's a lot of talk about Gary waiting for a tie package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know that one, it didn't float by me, didn't that? I thought, uh-huh, we'll keep that one for later. It was there last, no? <laughs> but I do have a question for Gary. Um, Vaporman's asking, 
what the prices are for the tips for the senior tips uh, they've sort of been um, I put them up for 15 quid each because obviously it's for a charity thing but to be honest most people have um, overpaid and it's, it's been amazing we we you know, I we had uh, obviously you know Todd who does Todd's reviews yes um, he did a on the back of sort of of the, the tip thing he he ran a big um, sort of uh, not a raffle a auction um, on his Facebook page and this morning I had a donation come through of 325 pounds from Todd and from uh, from whoever bid on on what Todd was doing now I I did give away a day modding in the shed as part of that auction, um, so I hope you're not a raving psychopath, whoever won. Um, <laughs> They'll probably turn up without any trousers because they know you. I know, yeah, but no, it's massive. We're I, we're at fifty three percent of the target, which it ends in November already. After three weeks or two weeks, it's two weeks actually. So yes. huge. There, there's already sort of. You know, nearly eight hundred quid in in the pot, so massive. And and as I was saying, the, the thing is, it's not just me running this raffle. Although the 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 page is also you know in my name because I set it up, but it is Vapors of the World uh, for Children in Need. And the idea is that anybody can pitch in and chuck some stuff in the pot. So it, you know, it's it's not just me running it, it's, it's a case of anybody can do something, add to the pot, and if it gets massive, you know, uh, I'll quietly turn up with a bloody great check on the doors of BBC when they do the live show. Oh, that would be corking as well, absolutely corking. Um, Sav, I'll throw it back to you because I know there's a lot there. Right, before we move on any further, chat are getting awfully confused about what day of the week it is. It's Sunday. <laughs> so, and we need to confirm that Monday VT Talk is going to be on. Yes. Tuesday Vapor Scene's on, but DE Talk's cancelled for this week. Yes. And Wednesday's Tin Your Tip. Yes. Day. Thursday is to be confirmed. Yes. Um, I should probably go to camera number one. It's quite a busy week this week because I'm doing VT Talk tomorrow night. Then on Tuesday, the effervescent loveliness that is uh, the bounteous, beautylicious babe and I bugger off down to London because we've got to be at St Pancreas well early in the morning because people are arriving from silly o'clock onwards and obviously we need to get tickets to them and, and stuff like that. And unfortunately from the northeast of England, uh, apparently you're not allowed to land there before quarter past eight if you come from the northeast. It's something I think to do with trying to maintain the stature of the city of London. <laughs> they let Dibley in any time he goes. With crisps, by the sounds of things. I was going to say, what is he doing? I don't know. He's, he's, he's fiddling with something. I think it was his trousers. They're very well starched. Um, I've got none on. Haven't you? No. Uh, go and walk and out the shed. you've got dry skin on your legs, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> he's got chapped legs. Oh, dear me. Oh, Lord. Yes. Um, where were we? Yes. So, <laughs> choose Tuesday we did off, which is why there's no DE talk. The minute Mark Rose finished his show, he's heading off to Doncaster, I think, to get a train to come down. Then Wednesday, we're off to Bruxelles, and that Gary will do ten your tip on Wednesday night. And again, I've got to say a big thank you to him for that because it's above and beyond. Um, Thursday morning, we're in the House of Lords, speaking to MPs, Lords, and Jeremy Mean of this parish, or some parish, or another parish all about electronic cigarettes and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that uh, we get goodly numbers for that because it is quite contentious apparently. Um, so I'll be gathering footage, uh, we've got at least two and probably three camera crews kicking about that I can get footage from during the course of Wednesday. So I'll bring all that back but we don't land back in the northeast or the environment of the studio until around about half past four, five o'clock that's assuming that there's no wet leaves or the wrong colour snow on the line or whatever it happens to be, whatever makes them break down. So Thursday night there will be a show of sorts, but it might just be me sitting going, I'm knackered. Or it could be anything, we don't know. Does that does that help, Sav? That helps, yes. Yes, what else we got? Oh um. I tell you what, hang on, hang on, hold that thought. 
we'll go to the wrong adverts because these are main adverts so all the sponsor actually Dave's Tackle Box is sponsored by Cloud9 Cloud9 sponsors Dave's Tackle Box ignore the rest Sofa6.co.uk sponsors of The Haze Out. And we are back in the room uh, on what is actually Dave's Tackle Box, which is sponsored by Cloud9 Vaping. Go there, Lisa, good girl, like her. Known her for ages, dead good she is. Um, and while, while we were away in the adverts, you can tell this is completely unscripted. Um, and I, I, I did start telling everybody why Dave wasn't here. He's been called in to work. He works in Switzerland. <laughs> it's a long way to go. So he's, uh, yes, he's tied up. I don't think he's being flogged or anything like that, but apparently there's a big panic on. Um, and I don't understand a word of what it is Dave does, other than to know that it's actually very important. As in, a company could go, <laughs> if he gets the computers wrong, and, and it's the computers that he does, and it could all just go, <laughs> so he's stopping it from going. <laughs> and you know good luck with it Dave I hope everything works out um, so bottom line on it is here we are standing in and uh, trying to work out what to do it's called flying by the seat of the pants however I didn't know Mr Dibley had a new product you have have you not Mr Dibley yeah got it about sort of I don't know about a week ago um, and performing well thus far it, it's a, a I hate clones, but it, it's a, a clone of the of the kick. All now, right. Don't ask me where I got it from. I won't ask you where. Where did you get it from? I, I haven't got a clue. I, it was one of those spontaneous purchases, and it turned up, and I thought, what the bloody hell is that? Um, <laughs> I did that with a Range Rover. <laughs> but it's, it's um, I was a bit dubious. It was about 20 quid. Um, it looks, now I'll try and take care of this. It's quite a tight fit, and the one thing I don't like about it is it's got the. Yeah, I tell you, have I showed you that? Crazy. Good lord above. It looks identical. Pretty much. The only thing is, it's got the. I think this this is pretty much. Can you remember the first ones that come out? They had the fixed pin. Yes. Rather than the spring type thing on. Um, there's no shrink wrapping around it or anything like that. It is literally raw and naked. Ew. So, obviously, um, but I've, I've put it to, to some tests. I've got it in a, a dripper now. Uh -huh. And everything meters out pretty much bang on. Um, I've got it in a bolt 
it's quite tight to get it in the bolt. I can't put it on. I've got to take the extension cap off, poke it in there before I can get it to work. All ah, right. Yes, you've got to uh, insert it manually and gently. Yeah, well, you have to force it in. Well, <laughs> you should never force it in. You know what happens when you do that. Yeah, I've got three kids that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna go wrong. <laughs> I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna, you're just gonna switch to the other day so everybody can see his face, his corpse. Uh -huh. Back to you, Gary. How do I recover from that? Okay, so. <laughs> Two thumbs so, in the um, full of spit. Yeah, yeah carry yeah. on. No, so it's in, I've got a bolt which uh, has got a duddy switch. And it, it performs really well. I've, I've got it set to about 8 watts on the dripper. And to be honest, for 20 quid, is because I, I gave away a kick I ordered in um, in the last thing we did, Stumpy, for the, um, uh, what was it for, Swarf yes. campaign. So I wanted a replacement. And to be honest, it's doing the job as well as that was, apart from, obviously, it, it's not as neat, it's not as well packaged, it's not, it hasn't got the shrink wrap round, it could do with some tweaks, but it's pretty much bang on you you wouldn't know the difference to be honest with you right so not not the same build quality but uh, otherwise pretty much the same i'm sorry i keep flicking to you there dave i'm fat i'll <laughs> flick i'll flick to you dave what are you using tonight um i've got the sigeli z max z max um with just an octopus on top <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm sorry that sounds just wrong what the hell's an octopus i got one of them yeah it's it's actually pretty good oh my and god yeah. Your tip's falling out. It's really oh, it's cool. your wick. Yeah. It works beautifully. Can't get a bloody thing back in now. Yeah, I know that feeling. But now it's really good. And I've got a juice. Um, it's my all-day vape, which is from a guy called Barry Peach. And it's Vape Monkey. And it's called Lanny Luau. And it's just a great juice. So that's going to be fruity as a fruity thing then? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Don't let Daz hear you that. It's got all sorts of fruit in there. When he, when he, oh dear me, no. You see, that's just wrong. When he gets back, if he knows it's going to be fruit, he'll be after it. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a, a prediction, and I'm going to predict that Sav has the Darwin, um, and I'm going to predict she's probably got custard going on, um, and I can never remember the name of the thing that she has on the end of the Darwin. The spheroid. The spheroid, there you go. Yes, on the gooseneck, on the Darwin, with the custard. They're, you're just inseparable from them, aren't you? Oh, God, I'd rather lose an arm than lose my dog. Well, the same could be said for the spheroid and that tip you have on it. Yes, that tip just works. It's just good. It's just always there, isn't it? It is, yes, it is. But I've got an octopus as well and mine's more your colour. Oh, my giddy aunt. <laughs> yes, you'll see that in a second, Dave. <laughs> Are you saying I like uh, puce, that was? Uh, it is, it is a bit. That's definitely puce. It's not pink and it's not fuchsia. No, it's, it's so that I can find it if it's in my handbag. <laughs> All right, you two. What, why the hell is this thing called an octopus? Tell me about it because I've, I've not had I'll one in my hands. You. Oh, here we go. Oh, hang on. I've got to screw it on uh, something. All right. Well, while she's screwing, Dave, you talk. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because it's got these really long wick on the end and it fits into the uh, into the top part and so you can drip more juice onto it and it soaks it all up and you can vape longer on a dripper yeah, it looks like that. and it just looks wonderful okay there you go so right and have you got to make it with these insanely long wicks i don't know i've well, never no, done anything have to. to make it it looks complex. Oh, I'll have to have a look at that. Are you taking that with you on uh, Wednesday? I am, yes. But it's got fire and ice in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's all right. You sitting there laughing, Mr. Dibley. You like men for... That's just unfair. It's, 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 it's unfair on so many levels. Although I have to say, I have been constantly going back to this pink thing. Oh, uh, dear. Getting into your soul, yeah, isn't it? they they stitched me up with it at the uh, at the knees meeting. I keep on going back because I didn't actually manage to spill all the juice out of it. I did try, 
I tried, but I didn't manage. And I keep going back and having a drag, and I'm saying, it's starting to grow on me. It's That's getting good. there. Mm. I'll mix you some up. Mm -hmm. Suit you, Dave? Did you? <laughs> what, sucking on a pink end? <laughs> <laughs> you said that, not me. <laughs> It's all right. I've, I've, I've tried the fire and ice. I did try the fire and ice, and I quite like that because I really do like cinnamon, but you don't put a lot of menthol in that, do you, Sav? It depends. Some people put more menthol than others. Okay, look, we'll go back. and Because you don't put a lot of menthol in that, do you, Sav? No, you don't put a lot of menthol in that, Dave. No, no. When you're mixing some up to take away with you, you don't put a lot of menthol in that, do you? No, I won't be putting a lot of menthol in it at all, but... I hate to tell you, I've already mixed it. Oh, bloody hell. Is there much menthol in it? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not too bad. I know what she's like. I'll tell you what, shall we play some video in? Go on. I think we should. Um, two bits of swath video, which you may or may not have seen. I did promise I was going to play one of them in on Thursday, and I ended up not, because we ran out of time. I've no idea why, because we had no material, but never mind. Um... So let's let's go to the first. We'll do them in the order that they came in. They're both filmed totally wicked, but it's actually more about the people that were there. First one is Chris Davies, MEP. Did we play this on Thursday or not? We did. I was just thinking, we did play the Chris Davies one. We did play the Chris Davies one. So the first one then, of the one that we're going to play, because <laughs> we're not playing, stop it, Dibley. This is this is what happens. Planning, you know, prior preparation <laughs> prevents piss poor performance. Guess what wasn't done? Okay, hey, this is live telly. It's seamless. Don't worry about it. It's great. But you know what's going to happen next, don't you? Doctor Christian's going to come in and have a look at me bum. <laughs> <laughs> and good luck nice. to him. Yes. <sighs> Embarrassing. Never mind. Um, yes. So this is Jack Straw. Now, bear in mind, Jack Straw is a very, very old stage, old school Labour MP. And we all know that the Labour Party, at least in as far as the MEPs are concerned, have, as a man, been obstreperous, obstructive, um, apparently deaf, not listening, um, and going, la, 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 medicines, la, 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 medicines. Listen to what Jack's got this year. So this afternoon I'm waiting for the visit of Jack Straw. Jack is our local Member of Parliament for Blackburn. He's kindly um, consented to visit today so he can learn more about some of our challenges with regulation and also to see the business and understand what we do here. So I'm very much aware that the Labour Party seems to have a very entrenched position when it comes to regulation of e-cigarettes. What I'm hoping to do today is to have the opportunity to speak to Mr Straw, who's obviously very influential in the Labour Party, to give him more background information to our business, the sector as a whole, and how disproportionate the regulation is and how we need to bring some sanity and sense to that debate. Now we're on 40 roll-ups a day, with no filters in. I've gone to these and I've not looked back. Yeah, I've, I've started with a cigar smoker. Okay. And uh, I've not smoked a cigar now for what? Five, six months. Okay, that's very good. I haven't been here before. I'm very pleased that this old redundant car showroom is now being used as a vibrant business. Um, the concern of the electronic cigarette manufacturers and retailers, their concern about the imp impact of those changes on their business, but crucially on the consumers. <laughs> what I'm just talking to uh, the company here about is, is that there are proposals by the European Union to regulate yeah. them as, as medicines, and you know, what, what benefit, if any, would come out of that? Not much. No, I, I was, well, obviously because I use the product, I won't really see. Do you live in Blackburn? Yeah. Well, if you, if you fancied dropping me an email or a line, it would be helpful to me if I could then say to health ministers, Look, uh, I've got this many comp uh, constituents, uh, and this is what they feel. 
Yeah. Maybe okay. Two, two, yeah. In fact, I think what would be good. We'll, 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 yeah. What I'll do, do Fraser, is if, if you, you could put out a, uh, a sheet here to say to people, um, if you, you know, be useful. If, if, if you agree with us, this is not such a good idea. Uh, drop an email or a letter to your MP, and this this is where you'll find them. So we can do that for here for me. It's easy enough for Jake Berry, who's the member for uh, Darwin and Rossendale, um, and for the adjacent ones. Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, we got sorted in Wigan in Burnley, so we'll do likewise. It seems that Jack Straw is aware of the significant potential the sector has to improve health. He's aware of the benefit that it's bringing to consumers. Being an ex-smoker himself, he understands that intimately. Uh, and he also understands that whilst there is an intent, he believes to be, and we agree, is the right intent, which is to make sure that the customers are able to understand what they're buying and to be assured of good quality products. The method that is currently being proposed to implement that is incorrect, disproportionate, and likely to have an adverse effect upon choice, upon the industry, and also more importantly than both those two things, on our customers as a whole. So he recognises that, which is he understands that the intent potentially might be the correct intent, the method to deliver that intent is wholly wrong and disproportionate. I'll go away uh, and put those concerns into a letter which I'll send to the Health Minister, since as far as I know there is no evidence whatever that this product is going to do harm, quite the reverse, it's, uh, it's there to do some good. E-cigarettes are alternatives to cigarettes. Cigarettes are freely available, de facto we are freely available, or we should be. So of course in our medicines. There you go. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry about that. that. Was Jack Straw? Now, anybody that knows me well knows that my politics has never been to the left of centre, never has been, never, probably never will be, especially given the shenanigans that the Labour MEPs have been getting up to over the last few weeks with the la 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 medicines, la 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 medicines. No, it's just wrong. Um, do what Jack suggested. Write, write to them. They have to actually take notice of it. Write to them. If you are in a Labour constituency, write to them. Just do it. Just write to them, please. I beg you. Um, I mean, we're going to go and make a noise. We're going to make 2,000 noises, aren't we, Sav? Mm -hmm. on, on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. We'll be making all kinds of poppy noises and hopefully getting some level of support from MEPs over there. Whether the Labour ones will join us, I don't know. I keep hearing little bits of sense out of people like Catherine Steeler, who's a Scottish MEP, she's Labour. Um, and then she goes back to the party line again, so I suspect there's a whip on this. And I'm going to say, right, Mr Miliband, your brother used to be the MP for the constituency that my wife's school was in when she was teaching, before she retired. And apparently, well, my wife speaks very, very highly of him. She reckons that your brother, David, is a very, very sensible man. Uh, but Ed Miliband, if you are allowing your MPs and MEPs to take this stance, I think somebody needs to take you to one side and give you a damn good talking to. And I think 1.3 million vapors in the UK are going to give you the kind of talking to at the ballot box that you won't enjoy. Think carefully before you instruct them, young sir tell them to do the right thing. On that note, we'll take the second wrong set of adverts and we'll be back in a couple of minutes.
are back in the room. This little countdown timer that we've got on Wirecast now is amazing. Um, it lets me know when videos are finishing so I can finish the video. Now, Dave, you were saying that you, uh, you've you been doing a little bit of uh, politic and have you not? I have indeed, yeah. Um, there's a couple of people I've been speaking to. First of all, obviously, my MP uh, to represent us. And he. I told him about what was happening on Wednesday. Um, and he actually sent me a letter back saying he's going to speak to the ministers at the Department of Health about it. Um, and he put a handwritten note in there saying, I do hope I will be of some help on this matter. Give, so, him, give him a name check. He is Gavin Williamson, MP, Conservative MP, unfortunately. Oh. But he's actually doing something about it, which is good. The other thing is I have been in contact with um, a very senior Labour politician. She is the shadow European minister. Um, her name's Emma Reynolds. And I went to school with her, so I've got a good relationship with her. We were good friends. We did um, economics together. And I'm pleased you said that because I thought you were going to mention the back of the bike sheds there for a second. <laughs> no, we won't go there. Um, but no, she was a good friend and she completely understands where we come from. She's read Clive Bates' blogs and all the other links that I've sent her. She's seen all the videos. Um, she completely understands where we're coming from. So I think we've got a very strong supporter here. She has said in the first instance now, she can't do anything about it, so you have to contact your own MP. But she's keeping a close eye on everything that's going on. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed here, we've got a very powerful ally. That sounds, uh, that sounds remarkably good. And th the fact of the matter is, um, MPs as, a, as a, a breed are very susceptible to letters being written to them by their constituents because at the end of the day especially if you're in a marginal you know they need your vote yeah. um, I've, I've got a, a very good relationship with my MP she's the wrong colour I wouldn't have voted for her completely the wrong colour for me mind the all are um, but yeah she's uh, she's picked this up and she's running with it and again she's Labour and again she's very supportive too which is is really quite amazing gary what's been going on down your neck of the woods because there must be a million and 53 mps down your end they all seem to be living down there <laughs> i think they do and they probably do claim expenses for living down here um and for their kids now i believe they can claim expenses um but yeah it's uh, i'm i've written to to my local mp um had the stock response followed it up um, but the I know where he I was going to say I know where he lives um, but obviously yes, <laughs> <laughs> we know uh, where you live in uh, that would be slightly wrong wouldn't it yeah, um, well, not really no, no, I think it's perfectly just, right just around the corner from me they, they've got their um, it'd be like their walking place um, and uh, I may well take the cameras down there at some point if I've, I've been talking to him about a uh, sort of a, a filmed interview but not getting anywhere fast um, so uh, see how that goes but yes I may film something at the front of their of their it's almost a shop um, I don't think they can object to me filming something out the front of it <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so no no but we can be guided by uh Mr. Sutton on that thing because he, he knows everything. He's yeah. a very clever man when it comes to television. As we've seen with the video that he produces, he's amazing. Incredible so, stuff. It, it is. Sav, who's, who's your bod? Oh, I can't remember his foot. Alan Campbell. Mm. Yes. And um, me and Kat have known Alan for quite a long time. We've spoken to him about this on and off for a long, long time now. Um, and he's brought it up a few times, um, but I, I haven't had the the latest response was sent to Cat. I haven't read it yet, but again, he's la he's Labour, so I'm not sure what what more he's got to say on it because he's brought it up quite a lot. We've been talking to him, as I say, for about two three years on this matter, various things, and um, he's whole, I mean, he's a smoker, so he wholeheartedly supports it in himself. So, it's it's yeah. you know this is 
this is the bit I don't understand. I, ju I just don't get this. This has got to be something that's coming from on high because mine, yours, Sav, um, the, the, uh, a member of the Labour Shadow Cabinet, um, and a whole host of other people I know that have spoken to MPs, Labour MPs, and when they speak to them, they broadly speak and are supportive. They understand what we're talking about. They get the idea of harm reduction. And it seems that the grassroots are, are kind of get it. They, they, they're with us, if you like. It's only when it gets up to the Ed Miller band and the rest of them, you know, whoever it is that calls the shots at the top, I get the feeling that might be the case. Do you think that's the case, Gary? I think it, it, it's... It's weird, and, and you can never know what's going on behind the scenes, and, and it's almost like there is this, you know, sort of this idea of somebody sitting up here, um, and, you know, it filters through, and everybody down, but it's like work, really, isn't it? Everybody, it? The workforce knows what the hell's going on, but the bosses don't. Is that what it is? You reckon that's... Well, I, I think it's about time that we uh, we escalated all of this. And it, I've been pleased to see that folks have picked up on the list of Envy MEPs. I'm going to cover this in a little bit more depth tomorrow night and uh, show you exactly where the list is. Because really between now and Wednesday, we need to step this right up. We really, really need to give this a kick up the backside and get everybody tweeting emailing, writing, and so on and so on and so forth to all of these folks. There's a whole load of documentation we can point them at. There's a whole load that will embed as PDFs as well. Let me just say, Google IDUCE, A-I-D-U-C-E. It's the French Vapors Organisation, and they have uh, a letter that they sent to every member of the NV Committee, and it is, it's got a PDF with it that lays out in no uncertain terms what uh, what should be said and how it should be said in insofar as MEPs are concerned. That and Clive Bates's blog. Now, the good news, and this has been changing every day, we did say that, didn't we, Sav? Yeah. Um, it, the, and now the uh, Amendment 58, the Compromise Amendment 58 from Aldi, ECF and EDR, I can't remember now off the top of my head. Um, but the, the one I've been tweeting about has now got this there shall be no flavours line taken out. That's gone. It is everything we need. That's what every MEP ought to be voting for. I'll throw it across to Sav and see what chat's saying. There's been an awful lot of people in chat saying when they've been writing to their MPs, the higher up MPs they're not getting responses from or if they are it's uh, just a stock letter um repeatedly over and over and over again is if that, they're getting a response at all is that is that um mps with jobs that are not their constituency mps yes. right if that's the, yes they they wouldn't if you are a constituent of one of the top knobs and i use the term advisedly careful mr dibley <laughs> if you are a constituent of one of the big knobs and that's praising them way more than they need then they're, they're on a bound they've got to come back to you otherwise you've got to contact your MP and your MP then gets hold of the big knob and sorts it out from stop it Dibley and then <laughs> sorts it out from there which is why Jack Straw was saying he would be writing a letter to the Department of Health now here's the thing if Every MP in the land is writing a letter to the Department of Health going along the lines of, Oi, what's going on? Are you trying to kill my constituents or what, Bonnie Laird? And that would be Alan, what's his name, wouldn't it? Um, if every MP did that, then the Department of Health is going to have to go, hang on, just a minute. If we try and get something through, it's not going to get through because it's going to get voted down by all of these people that have been writing to us all of these MPs. So we need to be contacting them because it's a, it's a two lane thing. And I'll, I'll cover that in more detail with maps and Lord knows what tomorrow night, at least I think so. Um, anything else from Chatsoff? Uh, yes, Mark Hamburg has said, 
The way to rate the MEPs doesn't end after Wednesday, does it? The next <laughs> milestone would be October. No, the next milestone is now September. 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 It's been brought forward. Uh, Mrs. McCavan has, uh, she's got the bit between her teeth and she did say right at the start of all of these shenanigans that she intended to get it through in this parliament. So they've brought it forward. And the reason they've brought it forward, as I understand it, and this is by no means carved in stone or for definite and what have you, is because they are fairly sure it's going to have to go to a second reading because there's going to be some argy-bargy. The likelihood is, they think, that plenary, i.e. the European Parliament itself, is not going to agree either with the Commission or, more importantly, with the Council. So there's going to be a game of ping-pong backwards and forwards and it takes six weeks. Uh, the Council would throw something back at plenary Within six weeks, plenary's got to throw it back to council, and then within six weeks, they've got to throw it back. I'm kind of hoping that there's 10 six weeks, is, is what I'm hoping for, because that basically means it won't happen in this parliament. Uh, but they are expecting that there's going to be a second reading, by the sounds of things, which is uh, it's actually good. That's good news. Go and have a look at Clive Bates's blog, his latest one. It's definitely worth looking at. Dave, have you got any words of wisdom for the folks out there? I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Um, it's all right. But, you know, um, you're on the team now, so you've got to yeah. suffer the same as the rest of us. <laughs> all I can say is just to reiterate exactly what you've said, and everyone has to contact the MP and MEPs. And like you said, if the MP you're contacting is not part of your constituency, that you can't do it. So go to your own MP and just do everything you can. Get the word out there. Just tweet everything you can, put it on Facebook, Clive Bates' blog especially, because it is fantastic, and just do anything you can to help out. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Gary, Sage, words from you? Again, I think it's, it's time to pile on the pressure. I mean, it, it, the, the momentum that's been sort of, you know, started is, is obviously making some... Uh, impact and, and causing some people to be, I think, a bit defensive, shall we say, um, which which only means that it's working. So it needs the momentum needs to be kept up. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm going to say this, and I know Clive said it, and I know Jerry said it, but I'm going to going to reiterate what the pair of them said. The fact that the great British public however many there is of us that use e-cigs and, uh, and have been getting voluble, the fact that we've got voluble, the fact that we've actually drawn a line in the sand and said, no, 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 you can't cross that line and you're trying to, the fact that we've been contacting everybody, MPs, MEPs, everybody, has made a difference. I think they thought when they started this, the Commission certainly thought that it was just going to go and go straight through and patently that's not the case we know for a certain fact that certain MEPs have completely changed stance 180 degrees diametrically opposed views from what they had when they started and that's only because of you that's only because of you people out there contacting MEPs MPs tweeting emailing Facebooking G plusing and all of the other various different social media that are out there. We've been putting the pressure on, you've been putting the pressure on, and it's paying off. Now, I take a great deal, and this is, this is going to be, it's going to sound a little bit daft this, but I take a great deal of hope by the events of today, this afternoon in Wimbledon. Because if a Brit, after 77 years, can win Wimbledon, become the men's champion, which hasn't happened for 77 years, this is the year when we as vapors can also win this battle but you saw the effort this is good this i'm liking what i'm doing here you <laughs> saw the effort that murray put in he was knackered at the end he he put every last ounce of energy into what he did to win the point and at one point he thought he wasn't going to when he had three match points lost a lot and then it was break point to the foreign fella novak Djokovic, right until I watched this, I was forced into it by my wife. He expended all his energy. He thought he was going to get screwed on it. 
and then just got that last bit of and went and gone and done it as they say and if if he can we can is that right is that right Sav? that's absolutely spot on that could be the beer talking as well <laughs> it's, you think? It's, it might be it's been one of those days and I'm, I'm feeling somewhat emotional not a little bit tired but there you go it's concentrating on drip tips so right um where are we how long have we got we've got about three minutes left so gary parting words from you then parting words from dave and then parting words from Savin chat parting words parting wow. words oh okay is it our time already it is. Um, yeah I, I think as you as you summed up dave it's we've when they started off you know they, they went out with a mission we have well and truly chinked the armor um, and I think we're, we're sort of now aiming for the jugular. So, uh, crack on. Absolutely. Between all the other stuff. Absolutely. Div? I can only echo what Gary's just said. Um, keep it up because we started off and everything was, it seemed all negative, but we've kept on going and we, we keep on going and it's all looking like if we keep this momentum going, we can do this. Indeed. Sav? Again, I've just got to continue echoing what everybody's already said. Don't stop. Everybody out there has done a stellar job so far and keep it up. And if you feel that it's too late to do something, it's not, still let your voice be heard. Absolutely right. That's the one thing that we can say for absolute certain. It's never too late. Never too late. We're going to fight until... I'll, I'll fight until my last breath to save ACIGs because ACIGs save lives and some prat on twitter said is there a peer-reviewed paper that says this where can i see this is some prat in a tobacco control outfit is there a peer-reviewed a paper that says ec saves lives hell john Britton, there's one michael siegel there's another one there's there's loads of them there's this it just we know ec saves lives ec save lives and 2,000 of them, we hope, will get saved on Wednesday. I'm going to draw this to a close now. Um, and I, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Dave gets uh, everything sorted out that he needed to. I haven't heard a massive... <laughs> so the business is obviously still in one piece that he's doing the computers for. That's all good. I'm going to say a big thank you to Gary. And I'm going to say a big thank you to Dave. And I'm going to say a big thank you to Sav. And uh, I'm going to say a big thank you to all of you for tuning in. Don't forget, tomorrow night, VT Talk. Tuesday night, Marco Van Basten, Vita Scene. Wednesday night, Tin Your Tip with Gary Dibley, the man himself. Thursday night, God only knows. We'll do something, but I'm not entirely sure what. And then next week, next Sunday night, I hope Dave will be back with Dave's Tackle Box. And I hope that Thursday and Sunday we are bringing you excellent news. But until then, it, is, it has been a great pleasure to share the last hour with these four people and you. Four people? No, no, it's because I've got Dave twice. <laughs> it's been a great pleasure to share. You, you know what I mean. It's one of those. Look, it's not my fault. Um, I need to play out with something. What shall I play out with? We'll play out with Brussels and we'll see you next time. Until tomorrow night, from all of us here, vape on. Vip hard and don't let the bastards grind you down.